Hi, my name's Vince Sheehan and today I'd like to talk about The Trial of Joan of Arc, um, directed by Robert Bresson. And um, I'd like to talk about this 1962 film. Um, of course, Joan of Arc is a figure who has uh, inspired countless works of art, um, including many films, and this is just one of, um, of many. But um, it's a really fascinating film. Quite an unsettling film as well. Robert Bresson wrote the screenplay based on the actual words uh, from the, the actual minutes of the uh, proceedings in uh, Joan of Arc's trial, and uh, as well as um, drawing on some eyewitness uh, accounts and material from her later rehabilitation when she was uh, it was declared that she was wrongfully uh, declared a heretic. And that began the slow um, journey of canonization. Um, Joan of Arc uh, is this 19 year old uh, young woman, and uh, it's quite unsettling because she is just bullied and harassed and interrogated throughout this film for her to recant her beliefs. Um, and uh, she's played by uh, Florence uh, Carre, who um, I believe is more commonly known as Florence DeLay. And um, the bishop who is interrogating her um, is Jean-Claude Fourneau, who is a French artist associated with the Surrealist movement. So Bresson, apparently it's a feature of his films, uh, is not using uh, professional actors here. And... Um, that adds to this rather um, kind of monolithic like sense of the uh, of the gravitas of this film I think it's almost as if um, I guess we're there in person it's not kind of dramatized excessively um, and the sets are extremely simple we just have um, the courtroom we have um, Joan's cell and at the end She's led her into the village square to be burnt at the stake. Um, the film um, is rather unsettling in the fact that this 19-year-old woman um, who's been caught up in the kind of machinations of the Hundred Years' War and captured, um, she's kind of basically interrogated relentlessly not only in the courtroom, but also in her cell as well. Uh, and even when she's in her cell, she's being spied upon. There's like a hole in her wall. So it's kind of voyeuristic sense of this film as well. Um, and it's pretty grim, really. There's not much respite for Joan. Um, she has one or two clergy within the council who are kind of secretly advising her. Uh, but that's about it, really. Um, it's very much her against the whole weight of the Catholic Church and the secular powers of England behind them as well, because of course it's England who uh, it's in England's interest for Joan of Arc to be executed. Um, the book, the the uh, film is kind of in three acts. We have a very brief introduction where uh, Joan of Arc's mother is clearing her name, presumably from uh, many years later when she was found um, innocent of her charges. And uh, then the director has a few words himself. And then we, the first act is really just the relentless interrogation of Joan of Arc. It makes up about half the film, uh, not just in the courtroom, but in her cell as well. Uh, this relentless questioning about her visions about um, why she is dressed in boys' clothes. That's a big thing in this as well, uh, which is probably to protect her from unwanted advances, uh, etc., from being um, assaulted. Um, there's um, all kinds of uh, questioning about the place where she grew up, um, her role in the church, her dealings with the king, etc., and they just don't let go of her, it's just relentless. About halfway through the film, um, 
at the end of this first act, Joan is is read this long list of accusations against her, quite outrageous and not really not backing up what she said at all. The, the court is very much weighed against her. You know, it's very much a formality. She will be found guilty as far as they're concerned. The second act um, moves from the interrogation more about um, Joan being um, persuaded under considerable pressure again to recant of her beliefs and her visions to renounce uh, what she's been talking about, these visions, her um, support of the French king, um, her military uh, escapades, um, but really to renounce and to kind of accept the authority of the, the church, which is um, encapsulated by this, uh, this court of clergy in front of her. Uh, she also suffers from food poisoning at this point. And then the third act, the last kind of 15 minutes of the film, is really about Joan under a great deal of pressure in a, a different courtroom, a more public space, uh, that she will, um, she's finally forced to recant and renounce her beliefs. And, um, and the crowd plays a part in this. You never see the crowd, but you hear them quite a lot, often in English, saying, burn a witch, etc. Burn a heretic as well. She finally recants. But then um, she changes her mind back in her cell and she's willing to face uh, the, the agony of being burnt at the stake for the sake of her faith. And right at the very end of the film, we have that unforgettable image of the smouldering uh, stake with the chains wrapped around it, um, which is such a bleak and moving kind of monolithic um, image to leave us with at the end of this film. Um, themes include, obviously, imprisonment, um, the kind of the, the Roman Catholic Church, uh, but also it's, uh, I suppose, it's power plays with the secular world as well, in this case, England, um, who are in France. Um, the sense of being... Um, of injustice as well in this film, of voyeurism, like I said. So it's a rather, um, perhaps it's not an easy watch in many respects, but it's certainly a powerful film and um, certainly one which uh, makes a lasting impression. I've included a short PowerPoint uh, with the main themes and the structure just following this. Thanks for watching. Bye.